I think that's all right. Am I wrong? <laughs> Can you what? hear me? No, of course not. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, even better. Hey. Can you hear me now? Um, I'm sure I will be able to as soon as this thing, uh, <laughs> the delay picks up. How's it going, everybody? Hello there. Tell Episode me. 41. Wow. So we must have skipped a few weeks. I know we have. Yeah, um, we because definitely skipped. Plenty of weeks. Because our episode one was June twenty third, two thousand seventeen. It was a year ago. So Wow. Uh let's make sure I can hear can what's you? going on here. I can't hear you at all. <gasps> so that's good. Oh wait. Now I can. Alrighty. Wait, how do we sound? Super quiet. Really? Yeah, so keep talking. I'm gonna actually increase the volume on the mixer. Oh, alrighty. Yeah. Well, welcome to a very warm June day in Reno. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm even joking. And I forgot my ice water at home. Nice. Well, I have my lavender latte, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'll have to check the volumes. Hopefully, um, wait, is that better? Well, I, there's a delay here, so um, you're probably loud now as you're hearing this. Sort you, of. You, people are hearing this, but I'll, I'll wait and see and I'll adjust it again. It's still slightly low, according to um, OBS. Well, we are having some issues with this mixer. Really? The USB out has been oh. outputting low. So maybe you want to jack it up on your side just a little bit, because I'm not going right. to turn it up anymore on the mixer. Oh, gotcha. All righty. And then... Properties. Save. All right. So while Alrighty. Richie's doing that, I was saying um, our one-year... This is kind of our one year anniversary episode because we, three days ago, uh, was when we released the, 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 um, we released the episode from last year, the first episode. Man. So, yeah. Wait. Got a little crazy. Oh my god, wait, no, I'll just do two, five. All right. No. And thanks for joining us on a, on a Tuesday if you come in, uh, although no one's joined us, so I'm, I'm saying that to Hello. literally nobody. Yay! That's even better. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh, now we're um, now we're at normal levels, even though I'm slightly soft. Oh, okay. Sounds good. I think. Wait. Oh, damn it. Well, either way, we sound okay on here. You just might have to turn your volume up a little bit because um, we are still a, a hair quiet. We are. Um, yeah. Let's see. So anyway, uh, yeah. All so right. what's I up? I think that's good, right there. Yeah. I might be wrong. All right. We're still soft. I'm sure, it'll, I'm sure it'll be all right. I'm sure it'll be all right. <laughs> Lies. You know what I've discovered? What's that? I mean, I should probably go talk about how my week went, but it's been so damn hot in my apartment that I've been just working outside, which Wait, is both good and bad. You have air conditioning. Yeah, but it takes. But the apartment is so hot, and it's all yeah. brick. Yeah. And it's in my bedroom because I'd rather have it near me when I'm sleeping oh, yeah. than when I'm awake. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, for people, people are wondering what we're talking about, it's really hot here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in the 90s here. Um, it's supposed to be 98 today. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is that's pretty hot for June in Reno. Mm. Um, usually it doesn't get that way until you know end of July, August. So hopefully that's not a uh, sign of what the entire summer is going to be like. Yeah. I mean, we went camping up in Lake Tahoe on Sunday night. Just spent one yeah. night up there. That was beautiful. It was great cool. in the evening. Nice and cold overnight, but not yeah. like too cold. So I think that might be. Now that my wife has four day weekends. <laughs> when she finishes this big uh, order she's doing for her side business, um, yeah. which she's been working on on the weekends, I'm wow. hoping that I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can take during some of the hottest parts of the summer, mm. we can just go up to the Sierras and camp overnight. And now that you found the leak, yeah, now that we found the leak, so we mentioned many episodes ago that uh, I bought the truck beds with a mm. Z, B E D Z. Um, it's basically uh, an air mattress that's designed to fit the bed of your truck, and yeah. this one's for a short bed Tacoma. Yeah. And uh, actually, I think it fits other short bed versions as well with the wheel wells on the inside. Mm. Um, that's crucial because it's got like a little pad that goes over it. Um, so, but anyway, we saw reviews that were like, they shipped with leaky seams and <laughs> stuff like that is pissing people off. And, yeah. And sure enough, ours had a really small leak to start. Like the first night we used it, mm. um, we probably pumped it up twice in the middle of the night. And then after that, we tried finding the leak, couldn't find it because it was too small. Mm. And then uh, and then we got on it 
just this Monday, uh, Sunday night, yeah. and my God, it sounded like we left the <laughs> valve open, the relief valve open, so it just completely opened up. Yeah. And uh, so, but we were able to easily find the leak, and then it comes with these two round patches, like bicycle yeah. tire patches, yeah. and the rubber cement stuff that you use. And we just loaded it up with that and put it on there after deflating the bed and left it all clamped up for about an hour yeah. and uh, held like a champ. So, Interesting. That's way better than when I do it on a bicycle. Well, it can, you know, it depends on where the hole is, really. You know, where the pressure is on a bicycle, especially. So, I was surprised on this one because it was on the top yeah. of the bed and right on the outside and a lot of pressure. I mean, you put two people on that thing once it's all filled up, especially me. I'm not a small guy. Yeah. And it held great. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how it works later on. Um, what are you doing? Bumping it up a little more. That okay. way we come through a little better. All right. Hopefully. We'll see. Giving us a little more volume. Somewhat. Um, I'm not sure how much. Um, yeah, Linda Linda says poor low sound. Yeah, I know, Linda. We're trying to, uh, oh, we're trying to fix there it. There we go. Yeah. Now we're good. Now we're good. Well, thankfully these. Hopefully that's louder. Thankfully these meters are now color coded so I can actually see them. <laughs> yeah. That was like, God, that was like one of those things that they probably should introduce a long time ago. Not that anyone at home knows what we're talking about. Yeah. But, was I thinking? I don't know. Well, you know, obviously I went to my dentist last week, which is something normally I can't take care of at this time of the year. Yeah? Because I'm not working that much. But I was down there, and, you know, I was about to head home, and I was thinking, man, I didn't bring a computer with me. I wish I brought a computer. Because <laughs> I was thinking, man, because, you know, you hear about people who, like, um, you know, travel around the world working mm -hmm. and doing their thing. I'm thinking, man, that's not the worst idea. You know, I was thinking, man, I could have brought my computer, I could have been working on all sorts of side projects. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the nice thing about digital nomads. Yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. word I was thinking of. Digital nomads, that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, man, I really should give that a try. That's also the reason why I've been working outside my apartment. I literally, it's been outside. It's nice when you can, you do, do like, paid work. I know. And, and, uh, and be anywhere. Um, yeah, I had my, <laughs> had my hands in the... Uh, my my crusty elbow in the screen there. Um, Linda says it sounds better. Brittany says it sounds good to her. So oh, thank thanks, right. thanks, ladies. Um, yeah. Glad to hear that it's sounding good. I'm take my headphones back off. Oh yeah. Yeah. So no uh, nothing on the archaeology front though, eh? Somewhat. I mean, I was thinking about it this morning. The reason I w I got my field watch back. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if anyone can see that. I actually can't see it from over here. Let me get rid of the <laughs> screen. There we go. All right, so I got my field watch back, which has been my field watch since I got into archaeology. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I was talking, when I was picking it up from the store, from the watch fancy, super fancy watch store, and the dude, you know, the watch dude was like, he was wearing a Rolex, and he's like, you know, they sell these with ceramic bezels and whatnot now these nowadays. And I'm like, when I bought this watch over 10 years ago, there was no such thing. I mean, there were mm -hmm. those things, but those were for like $7,000 Rolexes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but nice. anyway. I was thinking about that because, you know, I was thinking about that because it's like I consider this a piece of fuel gear. And even though it cost a lot of money, I paid for it and brought it home. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about that because last night I was listening to a podcast. You know, technically I was listening to it because they were, um, there's some tidbits in there about how to write better cover letters. But I hadn't gotten to that point in the podcast before I fell asleep. Right. But anyway, so the, he was talking about luck, and he was talking, this dude was like, he had interviewed like the current president of Microsoft or something, and the current president of Microsoft and, you know, what he considered to be luck, because, yeah. you know, he was pointing out the this president of Microsoft, I forget his name, it's, it's a very generic Chinese name, so I'm like, well, right. whatever, <laughs> but um, he was like, most people consider luck to be like winning the lottery, or like <laughs> you're a waitress in a store, and suddenly someone thinks, hey, you, you're going to be a great actor, and stuff like that. <laughs> But this president of Microsoft was like, you know, his his lucky break was he was a university student who couldn't afford to go to America to study. Mm -hmm. And but he had been working in his off time, like, you know, all these various things and just a confluence of events, because normally he wouldn't have gone to this particular lecture that was being given by this American professor, because normally he goes home to visit his parents on that day. But, you know, mm -hmm. it was raining and stuff like that. So he decided to just attend this lecture and what you might call it. And at the end of the lecture, this dude was like, hey, you're the best repair person I've ever met. Do you know a bit about this? And he's like, yeah, I wrote five like term highlight, five papers on it. So he runs upstairs, comes back down, he he impresses this professor so much 
that he offers him a free ride to, I forgot the American University it is, but that's, mm -hmm. you know, the thing is, to him, he, this president at Microsoft is saying that, look, opportunities come around all the time. It's, you know, it's being prepared for it. Yeah. That matters. Yeah. And I was thinking about this further because I was looking at the Archeo Field Tech's website. And there was this one person on there. I'm not, I, I don't know if you participate in the thread, but he's like, I That's sent right. my resume to 30 companies and no replies, you know, and people are trying to give her advice. She's like, no, I had people look at my resume and blah, blah, blah. I was thinking, it's not necessarily, you know, this person's expecting an opportunity to come to them, but, you know, are they prepared for it? Right. You know, and that's the reason I was thinking about it. That's the reason I was thinking about it when I was picking up this watch, you know, after picking up this watch, because all my gear is packed away. It's all ready to go except for water, because I always like to fill that up. I don't like, you know, old mm -hmm. water, stuff like that. But pretty much everything else is packed up and ready to go. Yeah. That way, if an opportunity comes my way, it's going to happen. You're ready for it. Yeah. I mean, it's the field season. Yeah. Your gear's not yeah. probably packed up and ready to go in December, although it's probably not too far from it. You know. Oh, but... man, I always put that stuff away, like, ready to go. <laughs> always. Yeah. It's, um... Yeah, and that's what Lita is agreeing with you. She says, very good point, be prepared, because much depends on luck. But, but I think what the point is here is you kind of create your own luck. Yes. You know, that's the, that's the point. It's like, luck is subjective you know somebody might say oh that person was lucky they got this opportunity but they also took that extra class or they went yeah. to that lecture or they you know talked to that one person at the conference or something and is that really luck or is that just keeping your options open and and trying to create opportunity everywhere that you possibly can well how many people go to conferences and then they're just like a wallflower they don't talk to anyone and when they do talk to them it's all about bullshitting but you know, I in, I think one of the worst things you can do at a conference is actually go sit and listen to a paper. Yes. Because that information is not is a not going to change your life. No. <laughs> it's it's not going to change archaeology as we know it. No. Um, and if it is, it'll be in a publication at some point that you'll read about it again. And how many conferences have we been to where the papers have been really mediocre or stuff you've heard Well, before? I know. <laughs> and and conferences are a great place to meet people and talk to people and yeah. and if you go to if you have like one session you want to go to because it's people that you maybe know. share your research interests or something like that so you can discuss future yeah. projects with them at the end of the session or something, yeah. that's valuable. But really minimize your paper attendance because you're there to really talk to other people. Yeah. And create those instances of luck, if you want to call it that, um, so you can use them elsewhere. It's like, a, you know, I, I, I've i been kind of... Uh, it, yeah. It's actually funny that you mentioned all this, and I'm not trying to make this an ad for Team Black or anything, oh, but um, I mentioned... In fact, we mentioned on this show creating the webinars yeah. for Team Black. Well, I created this entire webinar package where there's... I think there's about eight or nine different ones that you can look at. Um, and, and attend right now. Yeah. Um, but when I made these back in like April or whatever it was, yeah. I'll be honest, uh, I hadn't made the presentations for these. <laughs> I just made the outline and I made the webinar. I was like, shit, if I get somebody that wants to actually do this, yeah. then I'll finish up the presentation. But see, what that did to my brain was like, it made it so I was reluctant to promote them because I knew I hadn't made the presentation <laughs> yet. Uh. So I spent last week and I actually created all the presentations for these webinars. So those are all finished. And what that yeah. means is, well, first off, I also I also realized, listen, I'm not at 20 bucks a webinar for an hour long course. I was like, I'm not going to, you know, change my life at $20 a seat, even yeah. if I have 20 people in the class. Sure, that's some money, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to change my life, right? Yeah. So I dropped the car, I dropped the price to ten dollars. Really? I did that last week. I haven't promoted that yet, but I dropped the price to ten dollars. Are you doing it now? I know. Arcsert dot black. Um, go <laughs> check it out. But uh, in fact, we've got one coming up this uh -huh. week in a couple yeah. days on drones. So oh, I saw that. It's not an advanced course on drones. It's a beginner's course on drones, mm -hmm. and not even on how to fly drones. It's like if you want to use yeah. drones in archaeology but aren't even sure where to start, yeah. what kind are there? What are the capabilities? What do you need to know? That yeah. kind of stuff. That's what it's supposed to cover. We'll have more advanced ones later on. But um, either way, this is what we're talking about. Now, these are stupid little $10 webinars. You know, they're, yeah. they're not going to be a, a, a ton of information, but they're not trivial either. And, you know, for $10, if you can advance your skill set, and then you meet somebody at a conference, and they say, hey, do you know anything about drones? Yes. Or, hey, do you know anything about using tablets in the field? Yeah. You will have taken at least this webinar, and you'll have, if you had no other knowledge, you at least have taken this webinar and say, 
yes, I know that I need to do this and this and this and all this stuff, and they're going to be impressed by at least your minimal knowledge because most people have zero knowledge. Yeah, it's like the dude um, we know in town um, who doesn't have a GIS degree, but he's now a GIS person just because he happened to be in the right place the he, right time. He created his own opportunity. Yeah. You know, there was probably, I don't know how it went down, but at the company, he was a junior archaeologist just starting out yeah. with a BA. And uh, somebody probably needed some help in the yes. GIS department, and he probably went over there and said, me, I'm willing to learn. Yeah, well, you he know? already knew some stuff. Well, he already knew some stuff, which that's a leg up right there. Yeah. But he went over there and said, you know, well, let me do this, and now he's running GIS departments. So, because um, when I feel like when most people go to conferences and they think about networking and talking to people, <laughs> they think about going up and asking, mm -hmm. like, peppering people with, do you have any projects coming? Right. I'm out of work. Do you have anything for me? It's like no one, no right. one's gonna respond to that. No one's gonna be like, everybody's gonna be like turned off by that. They're always people are always seem like they're thinking about the, um, the immediate need, and they're not looking at the big picture. Yeah. You know, if you, but also this this actually goes down to uh, things I've been hearing and things I've been actually experiencing. Yeah. Um, regarding communicating with people. Yeah. Um, I get emails all the time and and Facebook messages where people are just like, Hey, do you know of any projects going on? See. It's like. You know, if I did, is is that the way to ask me? Is that am I going to actually tell you this? Apparently, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't. In first off, and second, you know, I'm I'm aware of what's going on with my company, and anything else I may be aware of, I'm going to be aware of because of the same sources you're aware of. There isn't some <laughs> secret club where company owners go and talk about projects they've got coming out. What? Yeah, there's just that or, just doesn't just exist. Afraid, or are you just afraid to admit it? I know, right? Um, I mean, if there were, I wouldn't tell you. So there's that. But you know, to take that for what it's worth. Um, good point. But you know, the point is, like, it, it's all about you know professional communication. So if you do go to these conferences, don't yeah. don't tell somebody. Um, the one common phrase you hear is, uh, you know, let me sit down, I'll buy you a cup of coffee, and I want to pick your brain about some stuff. Yeah. The person you're talking to doesn't have time for that. Exactly. They just don't have time. You need to provide them value. Yeah. You need to provide them value and 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 show, or at least show how you can provide them value. And what the, and by that I don't mean sit them down for coffee and say I'm the most awesome person in the world and this is why. Yeah. You know, have a conversation. Um, tell them what you can do because that's why you're sitting there. Nobody's yeah. nobody's sidestepping the fact that this is a professional meeting yeah um and and go that route you know i mean i've had people just blindly send me cvs say hey if anything comes up you know this is here's my cv yeah i mean i'm there's there's no place on my computer where i go to to look for cvs people have sent me <laughs> if i have a project coming up first off i probably know right off the top of my head who i'm going to call yeah you know right off the bat and yeah. see if they're available and if they're not available well then i'm probably going to hit social media you know, I mean, that's just the way it is. It doesn't it doesn't benefit me at all to take a cold call CV, put it in a file, and then start calling these people because I only need people that are available. And if and if yeah. it was three months ago that you sent me your CV, what are the chances you're available? You know, I don't have time to sit there and just call a bunch of phone numbers and find <laughs> out that you're not available. You know, I mean, I don't. True. And if I did have time, my client doesn't want to pay for it. Exactly. You know, because that's who's paying for it at you know whatever my billable rate is for that project so plus you should be able to convey how good you are to work with just by um just by through casual conversation i mean maybe i'm yeah. wrong well i mean let's be honest you know most most people they ask for certain skill sets because yeah. if you don't know somebody that's all you have to go on yeah is do you know how to do this right yeah. and, and most people are going to say yes i know how to do this even if they don't yeah so that's no judge of anything so if i sit down and have a conversation with somebody What's going to tell me whether or not I want to work with them yeah. is how well I get along with them in that conversation. Mm. You know, are we are we jiving well together? Are we having a decent conversation? Are are you awkward and weird? See? Are you um, you know, are you uh, are you just trying to get out of there with a job? You know, what's what's the deal? What's going on? If you're just sitting there talking about what an awesome person you are, if we can sit there and have a conversation about projects we've been on and yeah. just kind of reminisce about stuff we've done and have a good time at it, I'm more likely to hire you because uh, because you're you're the kind of person I'm, I'm going to want to spend all freaking day with, you know? <laughs> you could be the best archaeologist in the world, but if you're awkward and weird, <clears throat> I don't want to spend any time with you. Oh, my you know God. What I mean? That's like um, this dude I was working with out of New York. You know, he was... Um, I'm not going to say where or when, but, you know... He was just irritating everyone in the crew, <laughs> and uh, and he wasn't back. Yeah. Because you know, it's like he, supposedly he was a really good archaeologist according to the people in the office, but you know when we were out there working with with him out there, 
It's like no one gave a crap about any of that shit. Like we all know that stuff. <laughs> well, and that and that happens. And sometimes you're the irritating person. You That's know what true. I mean? Like I got I got I was with this girl. Oh my god, so bad. <laughs> I we kind of dated for like a month, um, yeah. but we were we met on a project. Yeah. And then we we went to another. We actually drove back. We were both from Washington State. We drove back from yeah. Florida all the way to Washington State through yeah. Montana for her to see some family and and. Uh, and then we got this job in, in uh, yeah. central central United States somewhere in the Intermountain region. We went down to do this job as an excavation, and she was going through some weird stuff. And uh, yeah. so, and, and I probably was too, but didn't realize it because I'm too close to my own things, right? Yeah. But I realized that she was going through some things. And, and uh, so we just ended up kind of breaking up amicably while we were yeah. on that project, you know, just like a few weeks into it. Yeah. We we're still staying in the same hotel room. It's not like we had this big drag out fight. We're just like, this isn't just working right now, right? Yeah. Like, this isn't the right time. Um, but after that, we were both a little bit sort of melancholy about it. And we were both kind of just like not fun to be around. And oh. we're working on this excavation. And they were getting ready to, we were about a month into it, and I think they were getting ready to go to a different site or a different phase or something like that. And yeah. we were the only two people on the entire crew asked not to come back. <laughs> really? And I, I don't fault them at all. <laughs> like, if I ever saw that crew chief again, I don't think she's even in archaeology anymore. I think she's actually in environmental law. But Ooh. I've seen the company again before. I actually talked to the company owner at SAAs. I don't think she remembers me at all because this was a <laughs> long time ago. It was like 10 years ago at this point. Yeah. 11 years ago, but... Um, but I don't judge any of them for letting us go. I judge them for not letting us go sooner. <laughs> like, like we were really terrible to be around. We weren't being dicks or anything. We just weren't very fun, you know. And you want people that are going to be good, personable, fun, entertaining people to be around. And that's True. a tall order for some people. But uh, quite Sometimes. frankly, you know, you're not going to be a, a like a waiter or a waitress if you don't want to be around people yeah. and and deal with them. So don't take that job. Yeah. You know, you're not going to do customer service at a bookstore. If you're not comfortable talking to random strangers, you know? I love talking to strangers all the time. <laughs> exactly. But if you're not, you're not going to be comfortable in a job like that. And just like archaeology, if you're not going to be a, a decent, you know, personable person on site, and like I said, I've had my yeah. times when I was the dickhead on site, um, and I learned from those. Uh -huh. But if you're not going to be that kind of person, well, then bigger crews are not going to want you around. Well, smaller crews, really, are not going to want you around. You could probably get away with it on a bigger crew. You know what's interesting, though? But, it, just, it just popped to my mind. Yeah. It's like about being prepared. Mm -hmm. It's like I know several people who um, they were about to be hired on a job, and then suddenly they did the you know phone interview or the in-person interview, and then they totally lost the job. Yeah. It's like you know interviewing is a skill. It is. Because, you is. know, when I was doing customer service at the bookstore, um... Every customer interaction was basically an interview. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that if I can talk to someone in person, I can probably get the job. Yeah. Which is, you know, it, it's been that way for a long time. I remember there was actually one time when I was a kid. Well, I guess I wouldn't have been a kid since so I wouldn't be able to work. But basically, I was in high school and um, Nordstrom's was interviewing for a... Um, for um, holiday work, mm -hmm. and my sister really wanted this job, <laughs> but she didn't want to go alone, so she dragged me there with her. And you know, and of course, you know, I can't be in the room with her. You know, the yeah. um, the room where you're waiting, unless you know you're there, unless right, you're right. there to like for a job. So she made me fill out the she made me fill out the thing, <laughs> and I'm like, but I don't want to interview with them. Yeah. She's like, just do it, you know, because you know, you know, just do it to humor me. So I did, and then, of course, I got the job, and she didn't. Because <laughs> she's also a very nice. terrible people person. Nice. <laughs> Whereas I was just like, you know, I didn't really want the job. I'm like, I was just chatting with the lady yeah. <laughs> who was hiring us. I'm like, right. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never know. You know, you never know. People like people like people they can talk to. Interview can sink you totally. You can have the best uh -huh. resume. Like this this girl yeah. who who on Facebook who said she's applied for 30 jobs and doesn't have one yet. Um, I'd really be interested to. Uh, of course, see her CV or yeah. her resume, see what it looks like. I'm sure it's fine. She, she's had other people look at it. I'm willing to bet there's no glaring anomalies there. Yeah. But here's the thing. In CRM, especially this time of year, right now, and she started this post probably two months ago, so right at the beginning of the field season, and I don't even know, does it say in there where she's where she lives or is she looking all over the country? she restricting it to a region? Um. E either way, either yeah. way, 30 resumes, that's nothing. Exactly. I mean, that's, there's, there's, at least 500 different CRM firms in the United States. Yeah. So you haven't even hit like a, a small percentage of them, um, and and you're and you're frustrated. I mean, 
And, and also, how much experience does she have? Well, that's the thing. Like, if it's her first, if she's trying to break into it, then 30 is not a lot. 30 is nothing. Yeah. You gotta put it, your work in. Yeah. But then it, but then if you are um, so got slightly more experience, it shouldn't be that many, I feel like. No, and and the and you, you need to be constantly revising your CV too. Yes. So when you get that first job or you get that second or third job, you're you're adding that to your CV. Yeah. You're you're putting in a lot of detail about it because you don't have very much on there. Yeah. And maybe you're knocking off some school stuff at the end. You know, I had a six-page CV when I had my first job in archaeology because I had a ton of stuff on there from the Navy, you know, leadership things, other yeah. jobs I'd worked bunch of schoolwork projects, you know, projects I'd led or things I was proud of and I had all this stuff on there. And as I got more work experience, I took off the um, yeah. the school related stuff oh. because it was no longer relevant. And uh, my CV is so like stuffed that I generally take off companies that no one's either no one's ever heard of or companies that um people will look at and go ick. Right, right. You know, like the company you worked for um, in Virgin Valley. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the first yeah. ones I took off my resume. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't take, I honestly don't take, I, I've got companies I've been fired from on my resume. Really? Um, I don't care. They're, they're part of my work history and what I highlight, it says I work for this company, so don't get yeah. me wrong. It says I work for that company, but what I highlight is the project. Ah. You know, because that project that that company worked for at Virgin Valley, that was a huge, significant project. True. And I don't want to take that off my resume. True. So, not, not that I'm handing my resume to anybody lately, but, you know, if I were to do that, I want them to know that I worked on that project, you know, like the yeah. like the Rex East project, you know, in back east. You know, I want people to know I worked on Rex East. Ooh. Because... The the reason when you get these huge multi state projects that ends yeah. up in in a certain region, like at least every single person in that region either has worked on the project or knows somebody that's worked on the project. Yeah. So just saying you worked on that project gives somebody an idea of what you've done. True. That's you also know? why I'm so glad I work for another company <laughs> in Virgin Valley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that looks much better on my resume. Exactly. exactly. So, I mean, maybe if you can get two of them on there and one's better than the other, then take one off and you still get the project on your resume. It's interesting, though. How can people brush up on their damn um, interview skills? Well, it's hard. Yeah. Um, you know, you there's there's a bunch of stuff on like YouTube. It's one of the videos that I want to work on, um, like Ooh. doing like a video on interview skills because I have a lot of stuff on interviewing. Yeah. Um, you know, back when we had PCS, we did a whole video on interviewing. You did. And uh, interviewing skills, yeah. Uh -huh. um, in fact, we did it. <laughs> we did it in a hotel room where we moved the hotel desk so the curtains for the window were behind it. We had yeah. the lights set up and we made it look like an office desk. Yeah. It was great. Um, <laughs> But I'm gonna, I'm going to, you know, recreate and do some stuff so people understand interviewing and job hunting skills. Ooh. And as usual, anything that's related All to right. getting you a job on Team Black will always be free. Yeah. Um, the webinars. Um, I want to run back to that real quick because yeah. while I did drop the cost of the videos, um, the non-job related ones, to ten dollars for yeah. the webinar, which again, drop in the bucket. And it, some of these are during the workday, but I expect if you're not in the field. That you tell your employer if you're in the office, listen, I'm yeah. taking a webinar, and and I hope your employer's going to pay for it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's it's job enhancement. That, that's how I see them. These aren't these aren't mess around kind of things. But yeah. anyway, um, you know, we're going to have a few more up there. But we're also I'm also once I get enough of these things up there to where I'm comfortable offering this, yeah, I'm going to offer. Uh, I'm tying it into the Archaeology Podcast Network professional membership. So. Yeah. Pro subscribers to the APN are 20 bucks a month right now. They get, you know, bonus episodes, episodes ahead of time, some swag, yeah. stuff like that. Ooh. But they also get learning content. Yeah. And how I'm tying in the learning content is ARC, uh, you know, Team Black. Yeah. So, but also, I'm going to add the Team Black membership. So that's going to be $20 a month. And that gets you all the webinars for free. Also, um, gets you yeah. all the APN stuff for free. Yeah. So one membership gets you all three things. Or all, both things, both things. There's a third thing that I'm not ready to talk about yet. It's interesting. So. Wait, how are any new members? Um, you know, we've had a, a handful. Um, we had a couple people that had to drop off um, uh. because they, for one reason or another, their finances, they were just like, I need to take a break for a little while Yeah. from 20 bucks a month. Uh, one one person was at 10 and another was at 20. So, But they, I think they'll be back. They didn't seem frustrated, which is great. And I understand financial concerns. you got to cut, cut where you can. And APN is a... Uh, you know, while it's not tied to Team Black right now, APN yeah. is kind of a, a luxury item for most people. So, True. um, you know, it's you can listen yeah. to all our podcasts for free if you want the extra stuff that's kind of a luxury item. So if yeah. you've got to cut something, 
you know, seriously cut that if it means you're not going to eat food. True. But, uh, but the Team Black thing I see as, you know, once we add that in to the yeah. membership, I, I, don't, I think it then becomes an essential thing. Um, yeah. It becomes something you need to keep brushing up on your skills. Um, and once, the other thing I'm waiting to do that is I'm going to actually stop doing the webinars um, yeah. when I get enough stuff up there. Um, I'll still have like a office hours types of webinars where people yeah. can just like ask me whatever they want to ask me. Yeah. And I'll bring other people in because I don't have all the answers either. Yeah. But I'm going to record all the webinars and have them just available as videos that you can watch anytime you want. Interesting. So if you're just joining us, I see um, Leah and, and Hunter. Leah took one of the Team Black webinars. Neat. Um, she took the jobs webinar and one of the first, I think the first one we offered. Yeah. And, uh, and then we got Hunter in there too. But uh, welcome. And yeah, what we're talking about is Team Black. ArcCert.Black is the website. Yeah. And uh, $10 for webinars, free for jobs related ones, and membership coming soon that gets you access to all the videos yeah. as many times as you want to watch them uh, with new ones added every month, hopefully, yeah. um, for free. So. Oh, you know what's in? You know, when you're talking about um, you're talking about luxury items, one of those things that I didn't realize, a lot of people consider a watch to be a luxury item these days. Yeah. But, you know, when well, you're... The, most people have a clock on their phone, so... That's the thing. Like, you know, when you're in the field, obviously you can't use that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you can, but it's just like an extra thing to have in your pocket. you got to haul out and crap. Right, right. But I was thinking, man, how many people consider... How many field techs have you seen who consider some weird things, like, to be luxury items? Like, um like a water bottle or a camelback you know or a car that works that too i mean <laughs> like you were talking about that dude who um what used to use those gallon jugs and he My broke God. his camera yeah like i mean how many years did he do the whole five the gallon jug thing yeah it's some some places i don't feel like skimping and on on items is uh is beneficial to you yeah field clothing boots stuff like that yeah you know, water bottles. These are areas where, sure, you can save money if you want, but if you just spend a little bit extra money one time, you'll actually save a lot more money in the end. See? You know, and that's that's what's really hard for people to see. I mean, that's that's my that's the hardest thing about trying to sell. Um, Team Black. Uh, not only Team Black, but like uh, you know, when I was with Codify, and then the app oh, yeah. I was developing before that, and then um, uh, which was called uh, what did we call that? Field notes or something like that. Yeah. And then there was, uh, and then now there's Wild Note. Yeah. It's because you're you're trying to convince people that you need to make a small upfront investment to save a ton of money on yeah. the back end. Yeah. You know. And and that's why I love the Wild Note pricing because it's so low yeah. that for most companies it's not a large upfront investment. Yeah. You know, when the last, I was with the last company, there was a larger investment. They've changed their whole price structure now, but at the time it was a bigger investment. Yeah. And. It was it was difficult for people to see that value proposition when you're like, yeah, spend two thousand dollars, but you're gonna save eight. You know that's difficult for people to swallow. <laughs> What's well, the thing? It's like this watch. This is the first time. What this is like the like the first major overhaul it ever had. Although mm -hmm. if I had been thinking more straight about it, I would have done some extra things to it. But that's not here or there. But the thing is, it's um. I mean, it was a big outlay in the beginning for me, but it never failed in like God like double digit years of doing archaeology in the yeah. field and yet you know there i've seen people like you know bring duct tape with them to duct tape their boots because they were too cheap to buy good boots <laughs> yeah and, you know and obviously i've seen people run out of water because they fell down a hill and they were like carrying their gallon jug of water right <laughs> i've seen people give themselves heat stroke because they were too cheap to buy a hat i mean one of the one of the things we talked about on a, a recent episode of the sierra archaeology podcast came out within the last month or two as I was mentioning how um, we were talking about per diem and drive time and stuff like yeah. that and you know um, I mentioned I mentioned that if if I ever saw a project that says it's going to be double occupancy for hotel rooms Gross. I was like the, the one thing that tells me is that you know the principal investigator either doesn't care or doesn't know how to bid on projects yeah and and they're just trying to cut and save money and the point was made that no, you know, sometimes there there is no choice, and I get that. Sometimes there is actually no choice. Sometimes you're <laughs> literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, camping isn't an option for one reason or another, Ooh. and you have to rent out like this lodge or something that has limited rooms. I mean, that happens. Ooh. But yeah. but you know, you just don't take that project if you don't want that situation. So, yeah. and that was my whole point because um, they were mentioning on a, on one of the crews, this girl, you know, she couldn't spend anything. She bought like a five pound bag of rice because she couldn't afford any other food, and I'm like. Listen, if you're working out here in the West, which she was, you're making at least fifteen to twenty dollars an hour yeah. these days. I mean, it's hard. You're hard pressed to find a job that's less than fifteen dollars an hour. 
So you're making at least fifteen to twenty dollars an hour. Yeah. You're getting per diem. And per diem, uh, unlike in the East, per diem out here is pretty decent. <laughs> it's pretty decent, yeah. So you're getting all these things. The rest of it is choices. Yeah. Okay? And you can't tell me it's not. Like I don't I don't feel bad for somebody who's buying a five pound bag of rice and trying to live on that because <laughs> and, and they're making how big of, how big and they're of making bag is that? <laughs> well, I know. And they're making forty five to sixty thousand dollars a year when you factor per diem in. Yeah. So you're making that much money. I understand there's student loans. I understand there's car payments. I yeah. understand that there's insurance and, you know, maybe there's money getting sent back home. Maybe there's other stuff. I mean, I understand all these things are actually a di an issue. They're yeah. actually a problem. But they're all still choices. Exactly. And and I think where, where this girl who with the five pound bag of rice, I think where <laughs> the industry failed her is she didn't find the Sierra Archaeology podcast or some other resource when she was an undergrad. Yeah. And when she went into this business, she probably went in with too much debt. And, and too much, too many obligations uh -huh. into a job where, quite frankly, you can't have a lot of obligations no. financially because if you do, you're going to go broke. Or you know? um, not just financial obligations, but like personal obligations. Like this person who's always borrowing money, even though she was on the damn Ruby pipeline, she's always borrowing money every goddamn um, payday. Yeah. Because, you know, something about her dog, like where she oh had to fly God. home to visit her dog or she was like, per, you know, putting this dog up in a kennel or something. Right. But it's like, hey, first off, you're camping. Like, just bring the dog with you. <laughs> That's the way I'd put it. You know, I mean, unless the dog's, like, stupid or something. But, you know, yeah. like, silly. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like, or, what, you don't have, like, friends, relatives? I know. I know. Well, that's the, that's the other thing, too. Like, pets, kids, stuff like that. I mean, kids, sometimes sometimes you can't do anything about that. And sometimes <laughs> stuff just happens. But, um, but pets, pets are a choice. Yeah. You know, and, and if you have a pet when you go into CRM archaeology, that's one thing, you know, that's that's something you already had a pre-existing condition, if you will. Um, but if that pet dies, or you give them away, or something like that, and you, then you go ahead and get another one, and you're still traveling and working on the road and working a seasonal job, that's a choice you made. I'm not going to say you shouldn't make that choice, because people do it and they do it successfully, but well, the thing is, there's it's so going to make it difficult. Well, there's so many people who make it work. They just bring their pets with them. Right, and they have to find projects that allow them to do that. You know, there's a lot of mines that won't allow pets, so you can't bring them out there. Yeah, but just leave them in the hotel room. Well, and there's a lot of hotel rooms that won't allow you to leave the dog or cat through the day either. Yeah. And also, size restrictions. You know, uh, a lot of archaeologists have bigger bigger dogs. I've well, seen true. very few archaeologists with, like, really small dogs. You know, for some reason, they just labs, you know, things like that. You probably can't even take a lab into most hotel rooms, you know? Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I know Motel 6, like, you know... Is pretty pet friendly. And if you can find a pet friendly hotel, then fantastic. Yeah. But you have to pick and choose your projects, mm, and that limits your options. And if true. you're fine with that, if you got enough experience to where you can pick and choose your projects, you have to wait until you get to that point, though. Yeah. You know, to where you can do that. But you're not going to be able to do that right out of college. That's true. You got to take what you can get. True. You got to put in 100 resumes <laughs> and take what you can get. <laughs> and, and while we're on that subject, you know, if this girl on Facebook puts in another 30, 90 resumes, yeah. you know... Um, and gets nothing? Or gets something? Well, she'll get something out of it. Just the law of statistics says she'll get something out of it. It might be a two-week job. It might not be what she's looking for. She might have to drive a thousand miles for, yeah. you know, ten days worth of work. But, I mean, that's work, right? That's true. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, you also learn... You have to learn in this business because you never know when you're cross paths with the person again, but you also have to learn how to graciously say, I can't take this job. That's um, true. Because it, when it rains, it pours. You know, you'll put in 30 resumes and not hear anything and then say, oh, okay, I'm going to put in 10 more and like five of them will call you back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's happened God, to yes. me before. And, you know, that happened to my wife and I when we started getting more and more experience. You know, we were looking for jobs. We, we submitted together. Yeah. I, knew, I knew couples that submitted separately and just hoped they both got the job. What? <laughs> but we submitted together. I submitted two resumes, one cover letter, and yeah. two, two sets of references. And I would say, listen, we come as a package deal. Ooh. You know, you, you, you get one of us, you get yeah. both of us. Uh. And if you don't have two positions, then thank you for your time. Um, and it worked every time. Ooh. We always got jobs. We always had work. And sometimes yeah. we had to turn down work because we had two that called us at the same time. And we'd have to make a choice. And we was like, yeah. sorry, we, we took this other job. You know, yeah. but please keep us in mind for your next thing, you know. It's interesting, because so. actually today, I mean, well, it depends. I mean, I might have to go do something later, but I was going to revise my cover letter today. Mm. I probably already mentioned that. Yeah. But that's the reason I was listening to that podcast, because this dude, who was it? He was an 18-year-old kid 
who mm -hmm. literally put off his college education to like get all these people to interview with him and he got like he got like Bill Gates he got the current nice. president of Microsoft he got a few other people and the thing is he did it strolly on the strength of his um of his cover letter nice and stuff so I'm like wow I really need to revise my cover letter yeah you know because I, I actually had listened to the podcast before but um I was listening to it as I was biking around and I wasn't like you know yeah, I wasn't listening as closely. The only thing I learned from that podcast is don't enclose, is don't add the um, is don't add um. Thank you in advance for like you know your reply. I look forward to hearing right. you from you in advance or whatever. Right. Because you know that kind of pisses people off. Yeah, because they might not call you at all. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and I I'd say there's there's nothing better than a strong cover letter because yeah I'm not I'm I'm literally not going to look through your entire CV. No. Like I don't care about the last few pages, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see what recent experience you had your education, stuff like that, your cover letter is going to tell me what you want me to know. Yeah. It's going to highlight your experience for me. Yeah. That, and hopefully, if you wrote your cover letter right, and you're not using a, a rubber-stamped cover letter for all these jobs, um, it's going to be experience that highlights what we're going to do. Because mm -hmm. if I tell you about the job, if I say, hey, we're hiring for a central Nevada job where we're going to be working on a, uh, you know, early 20th century um, yeah. gold mine or some other silver mine or something yeah. like that, in your cover letter, you should highlight the mining experience you have. If you don't have mining uh, experience, you should highlight the historic archaeology experience you have. True. You know, if you don't have any of that, well, they just say, I am a go-getter and I can walk in the desert. You know, yeah. I mean, say something. Or, you know, you know or I've got my M shop. Right. If you have that, that's something I would highlight in the cover letter. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, and that's that's good things. I mean, if you were... Looking for, looking for a job back east, you know, I, I haven't worked back east in a long time, but if I was looking for a job back east, I would highlight the tens of thousands of shovel tests I've dug, you oh, yeah. know, in the southeast and in different climates and environments, and, <laughs> and, I, and I would mention that stuff, so they don't have to dig four pages back in my CV to find it. Yeah, and you plus, know? you know, it also depends on how carefully the person's looking, because sometimes they'll just skim it over, over, one yeah. and look at, like, they'll just look at the bullet points of, like, the companies or something, Right. you know. Yeah. Thank God, thank God. I mean, I shouldn't say thank God because I hate shovel testing. <laughs> but I do have shovel testing experience. Don't we I need all. It. Yeah. Like, oh, especially this time of the year. I know. Like, it's getting to be July. Like, yeah. oh, can you imagine shovel testing your way across, I don't know, Oklahoma? My God. <laughs> I cannot imagine that even a little bit. Or um, yeah. this company I saw that was like looking for field techs in Florida. Mm hmm. Immediate need for field techs in Florida. I'm like, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like in July. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's almost no way I would ever um, do that either, so, yeah. Oh, interesting, what's that? This is a different video that somebody oh, already commented on. Oh, good. I, I was wondering why they commented on that. Oh, so. whatever, it happens. Yeah. Wow, I didn't, we didn't get that. It's like been almost an hour and we still haven't gotten to, ha, huh, we still haven't gotten to any of the subject I was thinking about. Well, Let's what see. do you got? Oh, man, stuff that would take too long to discuss, I think. Unless we've already discussed it. Unfortunately, I've got a long list of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Do we want to keep going? It's yeah. like, oh, cool. Yeah, we keep going for a little while. You know what's interesting? I mean, I'm not going to mention it, but, you know, sometimes you get, you know, you're leaving the field and someone's like, or you're going straight into the field mm -hmm. and someone forgets something like equipment or something or you leave the field and you forget to do something major like maybe fill out a form or something and I know that for these podcasts you have a checklist mm -hmm. when you were still working at regular in CRM did you have like your own personal checklist of stuff to do yeah absolutely um, I always had checklists based on what we were doing whether it's excavation you know are we camping or we're staying in a hotel room um, interesting and, and I put I believe I put a lot of checklists in the back of my book, actually, for people really? I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Oh. So, Field Archaeologist Survival Guide, if you want to find it on Amazon. But, uh, yeah, I think there's some checklists in the back there. And I, I use checklists now. I use checklists all the time for different yeah, things. Yeah, same here. I mean, I'm going on a small field project that Richie's been on with me before in yeah. a couple of weeks. And I'm already working on a checklist for that, so I don't remember certain things. Or really? so I don't forget certain things. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, when you're going to a mine... You know, you have to bring your light and your flag and your chocks oh, and steel true. toe boots and stuff like that. Oh. That stuff's just not sitting in my truck, you true. know. So, plus I got to make sure to throw my other spare in the back so I have two. <laughs> um, you know, you got to um, you got to plan for that sort of thing. You got to have your safety glasses, your mm -hmm. hard hat, yeah, and your orange vest. That's right. That's right. 
So all those things. I'm really looking forward to wearing a hard hat if it's going to be like 100 degrees in two weeks too. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Might Hold need up. another lavender latte. It's interesting because you know. Oh man, I'm not going to mention this on air. <laughs> but it's interesting the people you run into in town who have worked for um, various mines yeah. and their opinion, opinions of various mines. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure <laughs> How that. things get around. Yeah. <laughs> I have no doubt. Yeah. So. Oh man. Well, anyway, maybe yeah. we can uh, start transitioning oh, um, yeah. out of this. And uh, I just want to remind everybody, especially now, when you are looking for jobs. Um, oh, let, wait, Leah's got a comment. Um, oh, she says uh, she uses checklist too. She's doing a lot of local work and Ooh. has to leave her house early, so it's essential. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to be scrambling for something and forget something at mm. five o'clock in the morning or even earlier, you know. Um, checklists, are, checklists are amazing and useful, so. I mean, um, to, for me, a checklist is the equivalent of having all your gear packed up. Yeah. Because <clears throat> when I used to live in LA, my, um, my storage unit was not anywhere close to my apartment, but it was on the way out of town. So if I was heading to Nevada, I would just mm -hmm. pull out the freeway, grab my stuff and go. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same thing. Like, you know, that's the reason why I always make sure that everything is packed and ready to go because, you know, I just like pulling my truck up, grabbing and going. Well, it's, you know, the flip side of checklist too is like what you said, Richie, um, just to formalize that is, you know, you get back in from the field and if you're done with a project, you'll clean up your gear, yeah. you know, put it all, you know, clean it and then pack it all back away yeah. and, uh, and make sure it's good. That way, you know, it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, you know, like that's the, that's doing the checklist before you even know you have to go out and do the thing, right? Yeah. That's just getting it ready. Like, um, I was, t I was mentioning the whole truck beds thing for, that yeah. we have. Well, we, we've taken to leaving the truck bed thing itself in the back of our truck and then the little tent thing that goes around the outside. Yeah. We just leave them back there because uh -huh. we don't need to do anything. But I yeah. do take out, I've got a small action packer box uh -huh. and we call it the go box. It's got our jet boil in it. It's got, uh -huh. um, you know, a little lighter thing. It's yeah. got some trash bags, napkins, um, yeah. some utensils, uh, a couple backpacker meals yeah. and uh, toilet paper. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we just call it the go box and it's it's ready to go. If we just want to take off and spend a night out in the middle of nowhere, ooh, you know, it's perfect for just a really quick overnight. We don't have to take the camp stove, you know. We're yeah. not going to take all the things, and we know that it's ready to go because we check it when we get back. Interesting. Yeah, and the same thing with mining. Like I need to. I've created a checklist, but quite frankly, all of my mining gear, including my boots and safety glasses and uh, my hard hat, my chocks and my light, my flag is the only thing that's not in there because it doesn't fit, but. Those, that's all sitting in a box labeled mining in my storage uh, unit. So really all I have to do is grab that, throw it in my truck, and I'm good to go. Interesting. I was just thinking labels or just use different action to different color action packers? Well, I bought all kind of the same ones, so I don't oh. have different colored ones. Yeah, so labels. We also have a label maker. Yeah, so. But before, when I, you know, I started with like the yeah. Rubbermaid tubs. Yeah. And those I did have different ones of, um, yeah. but I've transitioned basically from those to the action packers and stuff that actually latches because I've, I've had too many instances where the lids of those things will like come off and in opportune times and plus they're a weird shape where they kind of come in. I like straight walls, mm. so you know all of our um, action packers and stuff like that. They just uh, and then those those yellow topped ones that Costco was selling for a while that everybody has oh, black I love with those. the yellow lids. Yeah, yeah, I bought like four of those. Oh, I love those things. Yeah. Those are great. But that's also why I keep masking tape around so I can label everything. Yeah, well, I mean, that's good. Yeah. Because, you know, I also use those for my lighting kit and I don't want to get there. Suddenly, <laughs> I've got all these film lights. Have your lighting kit in the field with you? <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, so. speaking of which, are you still going to be doing any filming or any sort of thing at the G Bags? Uh, that's still up in the air. I don't know. There's a new, new organizational, um, I guess, committee working on that. So. We just haven't been. We just haven't nailed anything down yet. So interesting. Good but that's a, well, that's a small regional conference too. It's now is not really the time. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Are you still going to be doing an APM booth there? I uh, I'm definitely doing a wild note booth there. Ah. Whether or not I do an APM booth remains to be seen. Their registration system's not even open yet. Really? Yeah. So I mean, if it's like a hundred bucks and I can get somebody to go with me because I can't run both booths at the same time, um, then yeah, probably will. Oh. So. Cool. Yeah, so Richie, you, might, you, you busy during the g <laughs> We'll see. I mean, I'm already planning on it. Hopefully you are. Hopefully well, you are busy. You know, well, but if not, see we'll in Salt see. Lake City. We'll yeah. see. Well, because um, everyone I know is like planning on going anyway. Yeah, well, it only happens every two years. you got to kind of plan around it. 
Yeah. So it's like I'm even planning like you know what to wear. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. <laughs> get your get your hat cleaned. Hey. Ready to go. So I was thinking more like a new fancy watch or something. Nice. I don't nice. know. We'll see. Nice. Alrighty. All right. Well, I think that's it for this week. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm essentially available this Sunday. Oh, cool. Um, so I think we'll be back on track around 11-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I've got, if anybody knows what Honor Flight is, I'm doing that too at 1 o'clock um, on oh, Sunday. Oh, what's that? So, uh, it's, it's a thing where, I'm, I'm in the Civil Air Patrol, so I do it to support Civil Air Patrol, really. Yeah. Um, but it's a thing where, I guess, veterans of different wars, usually older wars, um, yeah. They get a thing where a bunch of people donate money, and they Southwest flies them out to Washington D.C. Oh. and they get a tour of the the area, and then they go see the war memorial that's set up in their honor for whatever war they fought in. Yeah, and then they fly them back. And yeah, and what we do with Civil Air Patrol, because most of these guys are like super old, you know, they can't yeah. carry their stuff, they're in wheelchairs, whatever. Um, so we. They bring us actually through security, around security um, at Reno Tahoe International um, with Ooh. one of the airport personnel. So we don't go through security and we go up to the gate. Yeah. It's the only time in your life these days you can actually go to the gate and meet somebody. Um, yeah. Is if you do this auto flight thing. So we go to the gate and then we just, you know, clap when the veterans get off the plane because it's usually mostly full of the veterans. And then uh, yeah. if they have carry on luggage or anything like that. We pile all that stuff onto a cart for them, and we take yeah. it down. We push wheelchairs, things like that. So that's what I am doing uh, on Sunday. There's about four or five throughout the year. This is our second one this year. I think I remember you talking about this before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to do it. I try to do it every time it comes around. They usually leave on like a Friday and they come back on Saturday. We don't do anything when they leave. Um, we just greet them when they come in. The airport sets up this whole deal. There's a bunch of organizations, usually a couple hundred people there. Really? They have a stage set up. You know, somebody sings a national anthem. The airport authority talks, and then some other people talk. And you know, we're usually gone by then. Right. But uh, you know, we help them. We help them with other stuff. So. Wow, that makes me yeah. feel way more proud to be an American. As opposed, uh, I know. As opposed to like you know. Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to all the children stuff that was happening. Uh, I know. And I all know. the children actors, yeah. supposedly. <laughs> yeah. So. so anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's the deal with that. So plus a recording CRMR podcast in the morning at uh. nine, and then do this at about eleven. Do that at one. Oh, interesting. Wait, what are you talking about day. this weekend? Uh, I think if 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 they go with my topic, um, we're going to talk about the challenges mm. or even the the possibility and how you would do this, of creating a universal site form for possibly not just the United States, but for the entire world. Ooh, neat. Yeah, so I oh, want to get cool. there. I, want, I have definitely worked on it. Yeah. Um, I'm working on it now, co constantly, and uh, it's challenging. Well, it's interesting. It'd almost be like you could make an open site source, uh, open, open source um, site form. Almost when you think about it. Well, sort of, but it's not really open source. I mean, it has to be, the whole point is to make it consistent. And work across different sites in different states, different countries. Yeah. Um, and and really, what it comes down to is really working with people to find out what's important. You yeah. know, what's what's important to record. Sure. Um, because some states are not recording enough because they don't call for it on their forms. Yeah. And some states, I feel like, are recording way too much. <gasps> so where's that? Where's that happy medium where? You're asking for the right level of description in the right way that it covers all the things we would like to know. Yeah. And then create a universal site form that not only can be done digitally, so you can collect the information and then cross, you know, you can cross databases or, yeah. or, or God forbid, create a universal database as well and, and have all this information available to archaeologists yeah. and in an accessible way. I mean, I, I don't see why you can't record a Roman villa and a mining complex using the same form. Because then you'd have to have all those worthless historic cans oh, that Jesus. everyone hates. Or alternatively, you'd have to do all those stupid pieces of pottery that there's 10 no. million pieces of. The Roman ceramics. Well, yeah. they mean them too. I was thinking like, you know, I was thinking like, you know, the south, the actual Southwest as opposed to the Southwest that most people think of. Well, see, that's the point. Those 10,000 cans and the 10,000 ceramics, that's still one line on a form. True. You know? But and you know, it's, some people hate that. Well, I don't care if they hate it or not. <laughs> the, the whole point is... Can I record this here, and can I record this here, and can I use the same same form to do it? You can. So, well, again, it's a more, it's a more difficult question than yes, you can. <laughs> I know the answer is yes, but the question is how. Well, that's true. So that's where the challenge comes in. Uh, trust me, I've been working on this for about three years now. Really? Yeah. Um, wow. When I was with Codify, that was one of my major things I was trying to do was create a universal site form. Because Interesting. Because trying to code 
for the entire country and all the different permutations. Once yeah. you once you start looking at it, you realize yeah. that my God, these are all just the same names for different things or different names for the same things. Yeah. And and then on top of that, people are just some site forums. They do ask for the same information. Like if yeah, like one site form like Nevada might say, describe this feature for me. Yeah. But California took it a step farther and said. This is a milling slab feature. Here's a form. Here's all the things we want to oh, know yeah, about. Oh yeah, I know it. Oh. Yeah, because they have special things they want to know about milling slabs. Yeah. You know, you could you could also just, especially if it were digital, you could also just create the digital site form, and when you hit milling slab, and you know you're in California, it just adds different prompts. You know, Ooh. something like that. It's still a universal site form, and it still goes in the feature block. Yeah. But the the, the system knows you're in California, yeah. so. It gives you other prompts. You're still asking for the same information, and any yeah. archaeologist worth their salt would have put all that information anyway, because you because they're asking for an, an incredible amount of description, and that's what our job is. If you teach people to describe down to the most minute detail, which is what our job is, yeah, then they should be able to fill out any side form. That's true, and it that, doesn't matter what prompts are on there. That's true, but also sometimes people just don't care. Well, that's a different problem entirely. I know. Yeah, and that then it comes down to leadership. You should be reviewing people's work, and if your leaders don't care, well, then you got even more problems. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that too. But I just meant yeah. like sometimes people just don't care about like you know, oh my god, I know they can. Bah. <laughs> I know, I know. It's weird. We get frustrated when we find stuff, but that's literally our job. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's catch twenty two. Plus, some people find that stuff yeah. interesting, like about glass and stuff. I know. I mean, whereas you know, I'm kind of bored to tears with like prehistoric stuff. I'm like, right. well, whatever. Right. Oh my god, look at this. Lancelot or whatever. I'm like, yeah. all right, whatever. <laughs> I know. Hey, uh, I gotta mention real quick too. Yeah. Arc Podnet or Archaeology Podcast Network dot com forward slash shop. Oh yeah. Uh, we put up some new designs out there. We got one that's really cool that just says like hashtag archaeology and uh, hashtag shovel bomb. <gasps> and uh, I know. And uh, and our Joe gave me permission to use that after the fact um, <laughs> on, a, on, a, on the internet. However, he said it was trademarked, but I told him, and I didn't get a response to this. You guys be careful. If you trademarked or licensed something, that stuff expires. Yeah. And I looked on the U.S. trademark website before I put it up there, and it's not trademarked. Yeah. Unless I was l not looking in the right spot, or maybe it's a registered name, and it's not trademarked, oh. which is a different thing. I don't know. You know, copyrighted is also different than trademarked. So... Wow. Yeah, it's it's very cloudy, and I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So we're gonna use it until you know somebody says take it down, and uh, um, somebody already bought one too. So, really? Yeah. Neat. Um, I, I can't tell what they bought, but I know they bought something from that design. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's all we've got. We'll be yeah. back uh, at about 11 p.s. Uh, Pacific time, Pacific date time PDT on uh, Sunday, right? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just transfixed by this because it doesn't say how many people are watching. No, I think they either all dropped off or um, or just changed. Yeah. Interesting. I got out of it and came back in, and the three or four watchers we had went away. Oh, all right. So. Oh, there were watchers? Yeah, there were a few. All right. So. Hey, thanks for watching. Yeah. All right. Don't forget to catch me on Happy Archaeology Fun Time if I ever start right. uploading again. The next time we'll try to get the boom out of Richie's face again. Yeah. It was just in his face. Yeah. But Richie likes to be the man in the mask anyway. There you go. Oh, darn it. Uh.